other things, and that's just what budgeting is. You finish a little bit high in legal mm, yeah. fees for the police, you finish low elsewhere. Sure. But soup to nuts, we should be um, plus eighty to one hundred thousand dollars on the general fund by year's end. That's wonderful. I'm ready to. If anyone has any questions about any specific bills, I don't have any more. Um, no global things to say other than I'm looking forward to the end of the year, closing the books, <laughs> um, booking our receivables, getting our audit kicked off, and uh, getting that back in your hands in a reasonable amount of time. Okay. Probably uh, looking for an April, May delivery on that one so we can get back on track to normal timing for those kinds right. of reports. I had one question, and maybe it's under, let me look, allow me to review um, I think it's under fee schedule, so we'll we'll wait till we get down to number nine. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. I don't have any specific questions about the town's financials, um, so that solves number two. I should say resolves. Um, mm -hmm. Item number three. I had a discussion uh, with President Muterich as well as Vice President Tevlin Moffitt, and. You know, as usual, at the end of the year, we have a lot of vacancies coming up for a plethora of boards and commissions. And given that tomorrow we have probably the fattest agenda of the year, <laughs> not probably. We, well, <laughs> we're going to bring our sleeping bags tomorrow. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we saw no reason um, to not make appointments in um, January. Okay. Uh, so. That will be on the agenda for January. So, oh, hey, sorry, folks, we're, we're, while we're here, just because I, I know, um, did we have anyone? This is a, an ad hoc thing I'm going to throw in here. Um, it's my understanding that somebody from the fire company was here that wanted to talk to us? No, not us. Not us. Back there. Back there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, people hear us. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll throw you in. Um, does now work? This is gentleman, Peggy Marshall. Oh, hi, 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 guys. I was looking at the, 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 the fire department the behind so, you. Bill Friend, what do you want to come forward and tell us what's on your mind? Um, we, we were just told that uh, you might have questions about the budget or what we were uh, looking at. Or... No, I mean, at this point, we're... We don't have any questions. I just, I guess there was a, a communication snafu. I thought you guys had something for us, so I just wanted to give you a chance to... If you don't have anything, that's okay. That's too. fine. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, we, we were under the impression that you would, you, you, would, you wanted to hear from us. So. Um, no, we have, I have no, no questions this evening. No. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, right, thanks thank for coming. Yeah, sorry for the. I don't know where the snafu came sorry from. About sorry that, that happened. No, that's fine. Yeah, I was just trying to get you guys up front and center if you had something for us. <laughs> trust me, trust me, I appreciate that. <laughs> Um, great. That uh, takes us to the normally scheduled item number four. Do we miss anything? Sorry. No, it's we, we, we can't. We, this isn't an interactive. Yeah, okay. but we can't go back and forth. We're on agenda item number four, which is uh, retirement of general fund obligation to sewer and solid waste funds, um, which sounds really complicated, but it's not. Sean, could you uh, help us out? Tell us, tell us what's going on, what we're leaning towards doing, and why. Well, this is part of a process that's been on, been ongoing for two, two and a half years since uh, we really started to dig into our financial systems and accounting overhaul. Mm -hmm. And each year, the borough's general fund finishes the year with an obligation to its sewer and solid waste funds. And the reason that's happening is that um, prior to taking measures in 2018 to correct this, the... Um, the, the funds were intermingled in an actual cash account at Citizens Bank. So deposits from the tax collector for sewer fund and solid waste fund assessments and general fund assessments were all going into the same literally pot of money. Mm -hmm. And checks for all three fund activities were coming out of that same pot of money. Right. And in normal... Uh, governmental fund accounting principles, at the end of the year, that created a huge knot that had to be untied by the auditor and, and, and us at the end of the year to say, to figure out 
what dollars were coming and going between the sewer, solid waste, and general funds. So we said enough of that. So effective February 28th of 2018, we separated the accounts into actual different accounts at Citizens Bank. And we looked at what was owed from the sewer and solid waste, from the general fund to the sewer and solid waste funds. And we started the year, the solid waste, the general fund owed the solid waste fund 203,000 and change. The general fund owed the sewer fund $189,000 and change. We went through what transactions happened before the switch and the ending balance of the general fund owing the solid waste is $107,000. The ending balance of the general fund owing the sewer fund is $157,000. So these numbers are a result of years of confusing accounting practices that we've cleaned up. So what we're asking council to do, and we checked with the solicitor, is to do a one-time write-off of these obligations. And the reason I'm suggesting this should be done is that the sewer and solid waste funds are relatively well-funded. They're going to end the year I looked, I know. <clears throat> with uh, about a, somewhere close to 100, for the sewer fund, somewhere close to 100% um, in its cash account, 100% of annual expenses, and the solid waste fund is going to be somewhere around 50 to 75%. Whereas your general fund is going to end the year probably in the 8 to 12% range of annual expenses. So the general fund is not well funded. And this is an opportunity to decrease that indebtedness to these other proprietary funds from the general fund. Sure. And it's a one-time ask. We're not going to continually be wiping the dry erase board clean because this, the, the accounting practices aren't going to have this problem anymore. The, the volume of interfund transactions is going to go from, like, let's call it 100, down to three or four per year from now on. So what we're doing is part of... It, part of a process of cleaning up our books and I wanted to bring it to council's attention to have council's um, um, uh, buy-in and vote on this on this issue because I didn't want to unilaterally just extinguish debt without bringing it my understanding to, is that it's somewhat artificial yeah, that in, number in a, because it's it's like you said it's it's a byproduct of different accounting practices in the past where these funds were commingled, and over the same time period, the general fund covered a, a, a whole list of expenses that the sewer fund, for example, could have paid for. So then, in a sense, if we really were to do a hyper-forensic accounting, yes. those funds are owed money from the general fund. Right. That's right. So and if, the, if, God forbid, one of these funds, which is more solvent than the general fund, were in need of more revenue, it's not as if it wouldn't inevitably possibly come from the general fund anyway. So really this is just a, we're just cleaning up. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's my understanding from talking with, yeah. with, right. ev with yeah. everyone here and yeah. uh, Mr. Walker. This yes. is just a clean up of our accounting practices. Yep. And it's, uh, I want to, what I failed to stress too is it's not a, after, if, should council vote and approve this, no dollars are going to move. Right. It's just extinguishing an obligation that's built out, up over many years from these two funds, from the general fund to these two funds. As a, and this is being done not as a habit, but as a essentially a correction, and then we'll keep proper books from now. You know, that's what we're doing. Yes. Should in the going forward, if if any one of our funds owes any other fund at the end of the year, those transfers will be made as. as there will be cash transfers yeah. made and those, those no debts carrying, fund payables yeah. and receivables no, satisfied at year end. That's what we'll do as part of closing our book. I mean, I don't see any controversy here. Um, Gigi, what do you think? I understand this fully. This is We've been having this conversation with Mr. Metric and, and uh, the financial team that he's brought in and those conversations about these kinds of things being commingled in the past and absolutely trying to separate them, if not physically separating these dollars, but certainly being very clear in the accounting process and how these items are accounted for. So I appreciate the work. It's been a long time coming, and thank you for doing it. Yeah, this is great. Yeah. And we'll, it's been, we're going to recommend it's, it, yeah. and then let's hope it passes. I agree. That takes us to item number five. Um, Sean, could you update us on the potential payoff of outstanding principal on an 01 general obligation note? 
2001, Narberth Barrow borrowed $2 million in part to fund downtown um, streetscape and parking lot improvements. And it's been paying on that note ever since, roughly uh, an $80,000 and $300 payment twice a year, so $160,000 per year. And if you're doing your math quick, that's about $3.2 million because this loan was orig originated at a little over 5%. Oh, right. Probably should have been refinanced. Yeah. But that's... Here we are. That's, Here water, we are. that's water under the bridge at this yeah. point. Right. right. As part of our strategy to get a no tax increase budget before council and looking at ways that we could um, reduce our operating costs, we have proposed in our operating budget the extinguishment of this $160,000 a year obligation, which would run through mid-2021. To do that, we have to um, transfer dollars from the capital fund, uh, which currently, as of 11.30, has $425,000 to pay off this debt, extinguish this debt. And once, we, In fact, we're, we're making the final payment on this debt uh, tomorrow. And um, the principal remaining will be, I think it's in our um, meeting package for tomorrow night, but it's somewhere around $370,000. I don't know the exact amount um, at okay. the, right now. The idea is that, um, that, that that is a really big hit on our capital fund, mm -hmm. but we're expecting um, contributions from both PICO and Aqua. Right. Uh, to that will go into our capital fund and replenish it. Right now, I have a, I have an estimate from Pico that is north of two hundred eighty-five thousand dollars. I don't have an estimate yet from Aqua, but I think Aqua will be somewhere in the neighborhood of seventy to one hundred thousand dollars. That's the range, judging from the amount of work that Aqua, Aqua did a significant amount of work as well in the pro in twenty eighteen. So the strategy is to use what dollars we have today in the capital fund to extinguish the general operating cost in 19 so we can have a balanced budget and then take the paving contribution and replenish the capital yeah. fund Got with it. it. So it's a three-way motion, and they're all interconnected. So the money, so we're going to pay off the debt early from the, from, oh, one. From the capital fund. Then we have money coming into the capital fund, right. presumably next year, for Those Pico and Aqua. Payments are typically made in January. Okay, so early. Yeah. So essentially, we're using, in a sense, we're using the Pico and Aqua money to pay off the debt early. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. And that makes sense. I mean, we've makes been sense. talking about this for months. I'm yes. just, I'm just if, you know, this is, tomorrow night we're going to vote on the budget, so yeah. I just I wanted to think about that one more time. but. Um, I mean, it seems like a sound uh, accounting practice. We're, we're paying off a debt, we're being good stewards of the money that we have coming, and it's helping us put forth you know, an excellent budget. Sure. And it's not as if we couldn't borrow again if we needed to, mm -hmm. you know, by paying this off. We're just putting ourselves in that much of a stronger position to do that. Hopefully we don't need to anymore, but you know, inevitably when it comes up, right. that'll be less debt load we're carrying. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I think it sounds, Sounds like a solid accounting practice. I agree. I'm, I'm, I'm in favor of it. So. I am as well. So. Anything else on that? Just, that? just to be aware, too, um, that in next year's budget, there is 62, a little less than, a little more than $62,000 budgeted, excuse me, for new debt service. Mm -hmm. We don't know yet what that means. It could be a five year note, it could be a 10 year note, it could be a 20 year note. Sure of varying principles. We'll have to consider all of those options, but we should be thinking about that as an action of council in the first quarter of 2019, because we are going to need funds to pay for a very expensive uh, Top of the roof repair yeah. at 201 Sabine Avenue, which is under design right now. And then the rate on that loan would likely be lesser than the one we're paying off now. We don't have rate quotes yet, but yes, it will be less than 5%. So in essence, you could look at it that we're just switching one loan for another. We're managing our debt por portfolio and our our. Um, yeah, but we're lowering the rate. Expenses. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like we're paying off approximately four hundred thousand, and we're going to borrow possibly borrow more than that at a lower rate. 
presumably, so. Right. Right. I agree. All right. I say we go forward on that one. Yeah. Terrific. And that takes us to number six. Um, Sean, I think you have a draft schedule for us. Yeah, it's in our meeting package for mm -hmm. tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. I checked all first and third Wednesdays don't conflict with any holiday. Wow. And they're not adjacent to any holy day. Yeah, okay. that's, I mean, why would we... I'm fine. Yeah, it's, there's been no I looked at it, it's fine. I ran it's our standard it. schedule. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't always work out that way. <laughs> no, it doesn't so always work maybe, maybe we should take advantage of this yeah. while we have it. Yeah. Right. And my favorite it's, part is... Yeah, I don't have any questions about the schedule, and we're taking the summer. Is that where you're... That's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah, there'll be three three months where there's just one meeting. That's July, August, and September. That is a delight. Terrific. All right, well, I have nothing there. Um, that takes us to number seven. Um, mm -hmm. I have, a few, I guess, one brief comment when we're done, but on seven. Mm -hmm. But um, Sean and, and, and Vice President uh, Tevin Moffitt, anything else on the budget? I mean, tomorrow night nope. we're going to vote on the budget. I don't have anything. We've, I've been over it and over it and asked my questions and uh, um, and gotten my answers. So I, I have no nothing outstanding uh, on this subject. I'm I'm happy to put it forward and think this is it's sound and it's transparent and it's clear and um, I've been here when it wasn't necessarily that way and um, I appreciate the work that goes into it and that the public and the Council is well aware of what they're saying yes to in each column, and I appreciate that in a way that um, uh, took a long time to get to. So, yes, I'm prepared to put it forward. <laughs> Sean, did you have anything else on the budget? No, it has a cover sheet yeah. highlighting the changes um, since the last time you saw it, and there was another change that happened in the last 15 minutes oh. where um, I just noticed a little... Can I look at that again? Um, I have my, my packets in my drawer. I had a little um, uh, a detail I found with um, the general fund's obligation of the fire equipment fund. It's actually a little bit lower in 2019 than I had put in the original budget. Okay. Was this the three thousand dollars? So that was something south of three thousand oh. dollars, which we then moved to uh, a new the new borrowing line item. So the funds allocated to new borrowing grew a Got little it. bit. Our obligation of the yeah. Again, another dead issue. <laughs> okay. Terrific. Well, I mean, my, my thoughts on the budget were, um, thanks to thanks to Sean for all the work that you put into it, that and um, good. thanks to Gigi well on, on this committee. I know we've worked really hard yeah. in a taking a team approach to the budget yeah. and uh, working closely with President Muterick. Mm -hmm. And I think that I, I think that this committee. And this council can be very proud of this budget because this budget accomplishes two things that I think are really important. First and foremost is this budget takes us towards right sizing and yes. sustainability. Um, we took a budget this year and we shaped it more closely to align with the resources at our, our hands. And we're living more within our means and we, we, while we made some cuts, I feel that they were responsible. And I feel that this budget also delivers the resources necessary for us to maintain the quality of services that our constituents have come to expect. That's right. I also think it's nice that, you know, our goal wasn't just to create a budget that didn't raise taxes. Our goal was to create a budget that was ethical and just, that would mean being good stewards of our resources, that would mean living within our means, and the hope is that we could do that without raising taxes. But the, sometimes achieving that goal requires raising taxes and sometimes it doesn't. And I think that we're really fortunate this year that we were able to close a budget gap and right-size this thing and leave the tax rate flat. Um, if this budget passes tomorrow night, everyone's taxes in the borough from Narberth will remain exactly flat, which realistically, if you look at inflation, that means that everyone's getting a small yeah. tax cut. Okay. Absolutely. And it's not something that we're gonna be able to do every year. It's a year by year exercise, mm -hmm. it's unique, but I'm just really proud that we were able to 
to take steps towards right-sizing our budgets. And it's, it's my hope for this government that we can continue to do that every year as a priority because if we can keep doing that over time, then each council, as the years go forward, will have more tools and more dollars at their fingertips to improve our parks and improve our buildings and maintain the quality of services in a, in a sustainable manner that's, that's responsible. So I'm just really proud of us. I'm proud of Sean, I'm proud of Gigi, and uh, thank you for putting a lot of work into this because it, it certainly hasn't been easy and it's been a real education for me this year. And uh, I'm, I'm excited about it. Yeah. I don't know if I'm showing that, but I'm, <laughs> I'm hopeful that this passes and I'm, I'm really excited about this budget. So it's good. that takes that. care of, yeah, it's, it takes care of number seven. Um, item number eight, we have an escrow release, I think number six for price crossing at, uh, at 400 Conway. Sean, could you fill us in on that? Yeah. When a developer agrees to start work on a project, they sign an agreement with the borough stating that um, they would hold a certain amount of dollars in an account. They wouldn't touch that account. And as, they, as the borough engineer checks off the completion of certain public improvements, the stormwater system, the curbs, the roads, the, the street trees, the you know all the things that are part of the, the public domain of a private land development, mm -hmm. the developer can go to the engineer and ask for a release of funds and saying, hey, I, I, we, we accomplished A, B, C, and D, can you release that those dollars? Council takes the recommendation of the engineer and votes to um, either approve or deny the release of funds and then the developer can go and withdraw that amount of money from that account. So the project's not done and $52,000 remains in the, um, the escrow account and a large part of that is going to be um, landscaping because that still has to be done on, on yeah. the project. So. When we get down closer to the finish line with this pro with the developer gets closer to the finish line, that that number in the escrow account is going to go down to about uh, to a minimum amount, which is 10% of what they had originally put in the escrow account, and then that stays in there for a whole year. The reason it stays in there for a whole year is just to make sure the things they built don't fall right. apart right. Yeah. Right. and the right. trees don't right. die. Right. And then after that uh, year-long process, it could be 18 months. I apologize. Um, they can apply for final release of those funds, and I think the, the developers of the Methodist Church recently did that yeah. in the last four or five months. Yeah. So they've met their criteria? Yep. And they're yeah. fully released at that point. Right. So that's just, in a nutshell, how it goes down. Right. Um, um, do you have any questions about no, I mean, it, it, I mean, it, it, it'd be really getting the weeds here on what no. they actually have done, but it's... Well, no, that's, that's yeah. your job. I mean, yeah, no, we, right. we, set, we set policy, but, yeah. I mean, this is, you do this full-time. Yeah. You're telling us that the requirements that would lend to a release have been met. Yes. The list has been, been satisfied. Mm -hmm. It's been verified, so it seems to me that this is an administrative matter that, I mean, I, I guess we technically have to act, but realistically, yes. if the requirements have been met, yeah. It doesn't sound like this is a discretionary action. Nope. We can't withhold the money. Nope. So, terrific. All right, number nine. Um, Sean, you have an update on next year's fee schedule, and I think Gigi has a question on fee Yeah, schedule. this was composed um, by Assistant Manager Matt West with input from Chief Gallagher. Um, there you go. You answered my question. Fees, re <laughs> uh, fees largely remain unchanged going into next year, except except for um, conditional use hearings. Um, those are being bumped up from $100 to $1,500. The costs of those hearings are not reimbursable. I was just going to say, you, so, you make all my points there, brother, keep going. <laughs> the, um, just FYI, the um, court reporter's fee alone from yeah. four, four weeks ago was north of $1,000. Yeah. These, so, these hearings are expensive. Yeah. yeah. In time um, and money. Well, and the other change is a five dollar increase in your bulk pickup fees yes. for um, 
Uh, it's going to cost you $25 for a bulk item to get picked up by um, the borough crew. If you know, that, that bulk item has a compressor in it, that's going to be $30. bucks. we are just looking to offset the cost of disposal that we're incurring when we take it down yep. to the transfer station. All right. Um, so that seems to be working out. And everything well. else on the, on the fee schedule is the same as last year? It's the same, but you're seeing a lot of new PD reports in here that John came right. up with. We just never knew there was this menu of options and what was a reasonable price to charge for them. Now we do. It's nice. It's well, now that we have a professional team. You That's know, right. We're, <laughs> we're up in our game. That's right. Terrific. Well, I don't have any questions about no, that. No, Mr. Metric hit all the points that he knew where um, I was going, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you want to rent some of our traffic cones for your oh, yeah, um, that. That. for your moving or whatever you just want to put some cones in front of your house it's not $25 a cone it's $25 a cone deposit right. we give you it back they're free we should definitely just, clarify with parking just, in this town that just, you can't just call yeah. up and get cones <laughs> because you want them just to uh, turn the cones you're going to get 800 calls for cones say, tomorrow I'd like a few cones <laughs> Can you drop them off? <laughs> we, we used to we used to give them away, but we started to notice our inventory decreasing. So right, that's the deposit, and okay. it's refundable upon return. One hundred percent. Yeah. Right. Okay. I think that's smart. It's Whether fun. it's on your head or not. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. Okay. Well, I don't have any new business. Um, I have one item, and I, and I apologize. It's okay. What I did speak with Mr. Metric. Um, it slipped our minds that. Um, Public safety that we, I don't know, got away from us this year to appoint alternates. So we'd like to add that to boards and commissions and have that oh, advertised. Yeah. Okay, thanks so much. Alternates um, for uh, civil service commission. My apologies. Sure. So I don't know how it got away from how us. How many do we have now? Alternates. We have, we have two. none now. Have no, none? no, we moved them into full positions. Oh, so, so we need to advertise for replacement yes. alternates because yes. our two alternates are now full. Into full time. Yes. So and we had two before. Yes. So we should add two. Can yes. we add? I guess we need to do a fresh advertisement. Yeah. And yeah, so let's do a fresh so advertisement I, I, for two well, alternate civil back, service. And then, I mean, since this is your new business, yes. we would be voting on this presumably at the business meeting in January, I take um, it? If enough uh, applicants come forward and, and they you know, have that position filled and they come before us with a letter of interest, um, you don't have to be a lawyer or a police officer or you can just be a member of the public who would like to serve on a board or commission. So what date interest. should we encourage applicants? Well, let's try it. Let's, Mr. Metrico, let's two try to do it by the business, the business meeting. Like that whatever, would be, yeah, two yeah, days whatever the standard is. Three, it's like a Friday before the Friday right. before business has That's worked fine. out pretty well. Great, thank you. Okay, so just, whatever you know, be. let me be OCD for a second. <laughs> so we have two <laughs> openings for alternates on the Civil Service Commission. That's right. And Sean's going to advertise um, the openings. Mm -hmm. And they'll be it'll be open until whatever the time is prior to the January business meeting. That's right. Hopefully we get a lot of good applicants. I hope so. We uh, have face, in the past. Someone out in Facebook world wants that's to get right. involved. That's right. The alternates tend to yeah. tend move to move on to, and move that's up. That's right. So move in. Right. It's a good place to get in. Great. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm glad. I'm glad we thought of that. Well, we didn't have to like well, reinvent that in January. Like, why isn't this checked off? Yeah. <laughs> so, how did that happen? Excellent. Thank you. Well, I don't have any new business. Anything yeah, else, else you want to add, Sean? I don't. Thank you. I'm looking forward to tomorrow night. <laughs> yeah, well, it's nice that this meeting ended early because tomorrow yeah. night certainly won't. Right. Oh, well, thanks everyone for watching and coming and uh, meeting adjourned. Oh, can we comment? Oh, yeah, usually we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, are we still sorry. on, Barbara? We're still on. Yeah, yeah, if you guys want to make public comment, go well, ahead. Comments or questions? I, I'm, I'm sorry, I missed you in the beginning. The, Can you tell us your name and yeah, where you live? Joe Marshall, at two, 207 Maple Avenue. And just so it's a, you, it's a comment, it's not a, we won't answer yeah, questions. No, yeah. no uh, well, the only, I actually have a question. I didn't uh -huh. see the 2019 budget. Okay, is there, was that something that was handed out or whatever? I'd like to well, see a copy of it. It has been published. It has been it's published. Okay, it's on the website. Okay, I'm sorry, I haven't seen it. Find the, um, the draft one on the yeah. financial page? And then in the meeting no, package, under council meeting information, if you open the monthly meeting package there, the budget that council's going to vote on, it's a little bit different, not a lot different, a little bit different, yeah. and that has all the details in there. It's a PDF. All right, and I have a really, and it is a strong suggestion. You know, I'm listening, because we're very new at this, and we have been in Arbor, I feel like forever. We've raised six children. 
we're still here, they're gone, most of them. Um, and I'm listening to, yeah, we can advertise on Facebook. You sound like our kids. And I think that's awesome. Yes, that is the future. But I look at the signs that go across Narberth, when we have baseball sign up, when we, that we're the only two at this meeting. And maybe you could say, oh, well, it's a boring meeting. It's really not. This is how you learn about your community. If we could advertise not only for, uh, I don't want to say a select group, that's a poor choice of word, but a certain group of, um, a certain age group, but a much broader spectrum, get the word out. Not, you can say everybody has email. No, they don't. Everybody's on Facebook. No, they're not something that we can all really say, oh wow, there's a meeting tonight. You can choose whether or not you go, but it's how we will really be informed. We love Narberth a lot, or we would have left. And the changes, the financial stuff, yes, we're new to it. Young people can't always go. We commend the three, four of you, you're much younger than us, that obviously have families in a different age bracket, we're here because we can be. I don't think a lot of young people can always attend. How do we really get more involvement? And you, you might say, oh no, but we have enough involvement. I don't think there's ever enough involvement. I don't, I don't know. We don't usually, I mean, I'm just gonna, not even it, just it's, it's a policy. Yeah, a lot of meetings. Yeah, just it, it's a policy of council that we don't engage. Like when public comment comes in, we don't engage in it. I'm going to actually break the rule, but I just I'm <laughs> yeah, slow. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, but well, it's just it's the end of the meeting, and you're the only folks here. So I'm just going to take a moment to answer, and then then we'll mm -hmm. adjourn. But just just to, to set the record straight, it's been the policy of the president and the vice president that we don't engage in, in a dialogue with everyone who shows up at every meeting for every comment because in some meetings that would just mean that we were there till like 6 a.m. the next day. I understand. But to, to what you were saying, I mean, I hear you. I'm, I'm a millennial, so. Um, or beyond. You know, yeah, yeah, no, but I hear what you're saying. Um, the committee meet, so there, is, there are currently six committees um, in addition to two council meetings a month. The committee meetings are historically, I mean, I've been following this since I lived here. They're just, they're not well attended. And that's not a unique to Narberth problem. That's, I'm not scolding anybody. That's just, that's the nature of the beast. Um, and this committee is usually, you know, not well attended. I'd say the average attendance for this committee is 1.5. And I'd round down if I had to. Um, as far as engagement outside of Facebook, um, I, mean, I know that President Muterich has talked about utilizing the bulletin boards more. Mm -hmm. We do advertise our meeting schedule in the mainline times. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I do think that we're doing, as a, as a government, the advertising the same way it was done 20 years ago. We're just doing more. Mm -hmm. um, th th there's in no way, shape, or form do we want this to be insular. Um, as far as participation in meetings, <laughs> it's local government, so it is low. Yeah. But you'd be surprised to know that when there's boards and commissions, like the two that mm -hmm. the Vice President Tevin Moffat just brought up, NARPs compete with each other routinely to volunteer. Right, so. Not just our elections, they're competitive. Yeah. But for boards and commissions, for every spot, we usually have more than one applicant. So we have a, we have a very active, civically engaged community. Um, it's just... I guess that the, those that are interested have to look for it a little bit. But if you have any, if, what I would ask you to do is think on this. If you have a specific list of concrete things that you think that the borough could do to make information be disseminated more widely, then I would recommend that you, I mean, preferably I would like if you'd email it to us, but you could, you could send it in a letter, you could drop it off to Sean, just get it you know, to the members of council and let us know. And if there's something we can do that's cost effective, that would make something we're doing more accessible to the public, sure. I can't imagine that we wouldn't consider that right. and possibly implement it. Sure. Well, I appreciate that. And I'm gonna say something that may be extremely, extremely bold. Mm -hmm. I've had one or two interactions with 
uh, Sean, I'm going to be very positive, and I'm going to be a straight shooter here. They weren't positive at all. Well, Sean, we're, you we're, never we're, looked we're, up. We're okay, getting, so this is not. So this is no, this is yeah, this but is no, no, no. But this okay, is, and it can be off the record. Gonna, but gonna, let's. No, it cannot be off the record, and that's why we're saying we can't have this kind of exchange. So right, if you want I to, I don't. I, I, I think that's a con. Look, if you want to make public comment, you're welcome. I'm not. You. This I is a democracy. Public, though, you can. Let me public. just. Let me. You're welcome to say anything you want in public comment because you're a citizen and this is a democracy. Mm -hmm. But. I'm not going to, I was happy to engage in a little bit, break the rules and go into no, some dialogue on that, but I, I, I don't feel comfortable discussing Nor the performance of someone that. on, on tape. Yeah, no, you're right. But we take our communication seriously and, we'll, you know, this is and not we, an issue. There, there is the yearly all, calendar all that goes out. So, so, terrific. So with yeah. that, is there any further public comment? Well, I, I do have a comment. Just because we are, so this will be the last public yeah, comment. So we're, yeah. so we're not really well we'll let attended. you go home. Um, you know, and I'm not sure how long we've used the same audit firm, okay, but my, my point would be that because we don't have a lot of uh, people attending these meetings that um, it would be a good thing to look at the auditor that we have uh, and make sure that we're satisfied that we have a third look at this. You know, you have a very small public look at our, at our financial situation. You, you have, you know, you have the borough, you have the council, which is great. And I don't know much about the audit firm that we have, but I think that um, if they've been with us for a very long time, we should consider whether it's something that we want to, to uh, continue with, or should we have a third look, you know, at, at this from a, from a different party, uh, a different auditing firm, only because you know, I see what, what Sean has done. I think he's, he's cleaning up things, and that's great. But you always want to have um, another look, okay? And I don't think the public awareness is enough, okay, of that, of that third look. You guys are one. The public is two. The audit firm should be three. And I just. Pennsylvania is four. I don't like it. So I just want to let them make all the comments. You know, there's no. That's all. Okay. That's all Thank I want you. to say. Comment. Um, with that, any other new business? No. All right, well, we have one matter that we're going to discuss um, briefly later today, but um, okay. an, exec an executive matter. But okay. That'll uh, meeting adjourned.